Today's newspapers have brought along the news that the national badminton camp has been cancelled and that the Badminton Association of India went ahead and picked the team for the Thomas Cup and the Uber Cup. This is interesting. Interesting for two reasons. One is because the national camp has been cancelled. I think it is unprecedented for a, for a national camp to be called off uh, for reasons that we shall discuss in just, just a bit. Also unprecedented because the National Federation, which is currently de-recognized by the ministry because the court has ordered for the de-recognition and to try and make sense of the whole scenario, I'm going to be joined by my friend S. Kanan, a very senior sport journalist. The two of us will try and decode what is happening in the world of badminton at this point of time. But before I bring Kanan in, uh, let me try and give you a bit of a background. Uh, this is not the first time a National Sports Federation has been delisted by the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sport. This time is strange because the court has ordered something like that and this is a result of a court case uh, that has been pending for a number of years. But uh, more recently, uh, the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports has been forced to not give recognition to any National Sports Federation. Now, under the National Sports Court of India, which is the National Sport Development Board of India, no federation which is rec not recognized can select a team to represent India. And no federation can call itself an Indian federation uh, because of the circumstances. Now, it's very unfortunate that the Badminton Association of India has been caught in the crossfire uh, for no fault of this, but um, then it is a de-recognized federation for all practical purposes. Now, there are precedents. Uh, you've got the Archery Association of India, which was de-recognized in the year 2012 and still has not got recognition of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sport. And the Gymnastics wow. Federation of India, which has been kept out for a number of years uh, for various reasons, uh, not the least being how its elections have been conducted. Now, wow. federations have seen uh, their national teams go and compete internationally, including in the Asian Games, the Commonwealth Games and the Olympic Games. But then, the selection has always been done by the Sports Authority of India. Of course, uh, some of the Federation officials or the coaches have been involved in the selection process. But it's very interesting that the Badminton Association of India yesterday went ahead and selected its own team, perhaps without even consulting the Sports Authority of India. Uh, typically, press releases come from the Sports Authority of India. But because it was the Badminton Association which announced the teams yesterday, it does seem a little bit strange. What are your own thoughts, Kanan? It's very strange because uh, going by the previous in examples, instances which you gave of gymnastics and archery, two sport, you know, where they've competed in uh, Olympics, they've competed in Asian Games, uh, qualifiers, also World Cups and so on and so forth. Uh, their de-recognition battles have been on for very long. Sport did not suffer. Sai held camps. In some cases, an ad hoc body was formed. Uh, multiple stakeholders from IOA, from the uh, other concerned people were there. But in this case now, there is no such uh, instance where any ad hoc has been formed. So it is basically Sai which has been doing it. So I thought maybe it would have been best a Sai press release you know, informing of camp or camp not happening or players reporting, not reporting quarantine. So, when a federation is de-recognized among the 57, EAI is one. For it to announce is very, very strange. In the eyes of the law, BAI is de-recognized. And I am hoping that tomorrow someone does not point this out in the Delhi High Court because the case is going to come up next week. As you said, it has been dragging on now for 10 years. So, they are presenting an opportunity by themselves, a self-goal. So, uh, it would have been ideal if SAI consulted BAI and some experts, there are plenty of them, and then announced the team. Uh, Kanan, uh, you are aware that both in case of shooting, hockey, for example, uh, it is the Sports Authority of India which has got in touch with athletes directly and asked them to report to camps. Uh, so I would reckon that given the de-recognition of all the all this National Sports Federation, uh, it is the Sports Authority of India which has taken over the control of running all national camps and of uh, choosing which athletes to come. So under those circumstances, it is peculiar that 
it is the Badminton Association of India which has gone ahead and announced the cancellation of the camp. And then uh, the Sports Authority of India scrambled to send a press release uh, stating its own reasons why the camp was not held. Uh, don't you think that the Sports Authority of India made a mistake somewhere in, in not planning the camp really well, given the fact that it is the one which is running Indian sport currently? I think this is a very uh, rare example where they've messed up because, to give them credit, uh, post lockdown, we've seen that players, especially the track and field athletes who were there in Patiala, continued to stay there. Weightlifters continued to stay there in Patiala. Some of the athletes, track and field, were in Bangalore. The hockey, both men's team, women's teams, both the teams were there. It was only once the first phase of unlock happened, players were allowed to fly out. Hockey decided to allow the players to go back. But when players again had to return after one month, it got delayed by another two weeks. So it was the SAI, or to be more specific, Tops, Target Olympic Podium Scheme, the boss, Amanda Rajesh Rajgopalan, who was reaching out to athletes, federations were not involved at all. In fact, my personal example, or my personal experience, when I contacted two federations, NRAI as well as Hockey India, was the camp resumption, the camp return is being handled by SAI. They are not doing anything. So, it is very funny that here, Bai has been given so much of power. Or I don't know whether it is Bai or just one man. The national coach P. Gopichan, the Sai Gopichan Academy. Is it his part, he wields, which has led to this situation? I am not sure. But the fact remains, they have goofed it up. There could be legal repercussions. Uh, we shall get to the uh, chief coach's role in just a minute, Karna. Uh, but the, what is emerging out of uh, Hyderabad is the, is the fact that some of the players refuse to uh, stick to the COVID protocols, including quarantine, because there apparently is no time. But given the fact that the national camp was held uh, from August 7th or 8th, uh, it's more than a month since the national camp started, obviously there have been some changes. Uh, don't you think that somewhere down the line, people who selected those who could attend the camp, the choice of player, uh, they made a mistake in not, not calling for everybody. They could have been quarantined in Hyderabad for, for a week or uh, five days as, as the requirement was and then gone ahead and uh, trained. Uh, you're going to have a situation where the Indian team is, is going to go to Denmark. Uh, I hope, I hope uh, they will go. Uh, the situation is such that the team will go with no practice, uh, with not much teamwork. You would, you would expect some kind of teamwork to happen. But do you, don't, you, don't you think that somewhere down the line, uh, the sharing of the standard operating procedure by the Sports Authority of India and by the chief coach with the player, somewhere there seems to have been a miscommunication. Definitely, I, I cannot blame it on miscommunication. I'll just uh, slightly digress. When sport resumed post-COVID, the pandemic peak, the first thing were the leagues abroad, football leagues abroad. You had the Korean League resumption sometime late May. You know, that was the first sport image we saw on our TV sets. Slowly, you had football leagues in Germany, Spain, and of course, in England. For all these leagues, there was a very tight bio-bubble created, the new word in, in, in sport, bio-bubble, and how uh, everywhere you find that there is a quarantine, you follow the quarantine, you cannot escape it. You may be a Nozil, you may be a Messi, you may be anybody, you follow that protocol. That protocol was done. Then you had the cricket series in England, three cricket series. First, West Indies came, they came in a bubble, they had to face it. Then Ireland, then Pakistan. And now, again, in Dubai, in Sharjah, in Abu Dhabi, the Indian cricketers, now very soon English cricketers, Aussie cricketers, everybody are going to be there. Everyone is following tight protocols. Is the BAI, is the SAI national coach, P. Gopichan, are the SAI not capable of handling the superstar players? Whether it is PV Sindhu, whether it is Saina Nehwal or Saina Nehwal protesting, I will not come to the camp unless you call my husband. Is this some kind of party going on? I don't know. And then out of a doubles combination, one girl says, I will train in Bangalore. And everyone knew in Telangana, COVID cases were high. The testing norms were low. There was a lot of panic. 
the bank camp could have been advanced in fact it could have been held in delhi it could have been held in bangalore it could have been held in any other city that even off the record on record it is very well known sindhu has been training more in a private academy in hyderabad i believe it's called sujitra academy she trains there with her own trainer a gentleman called srikant this has been confirmed by her own father to various other coaches in delhi so i think this process of disintegration the high power gopi is bust it's just gone bust this time you cannot go to thomas cup and over cup unprepared you cannot let players be like this the first matter is of discipline the second is of dedication both seem missing um kanan we have we have talked a little bit about sai and you just discussed how uh, gopichand has perhaps lost control over the player uh, you could not imagine a situation where pb uh, sindhu would first say that she is not going to go to go and play the uber cup uh, for personal reason and then agree when the bi president stepped in uh, you you would not imagine a situation where uh, saina nehwal would step up and say unless uh, my husband parpalli kashyap is part of the team i'm not going to attend the camp uh, some years ago you would not think that this was possible at all uh, it is it is tough to imagine uh, gopichand losing control over the team uh, over the players as well some players who he has groomed uh, in fact some journalists in hyderabad have been telling me that uh, what happened to sm arif uh, because gopi outgrew arif is happening to gopi now perhaps the players have outgrown him uh, they want to uh, be on their own and uh, sprout wings and fly uh, it is it is a, not a very happy scenario not only from a coach's perspective but also from indian badminton's perspective but have the players become too big for the game yes of course there was dwala gutta who spoke against gopichan for many years uh, even when she was playing she would speak against gopichan but there seems to be something brewing and that the badminton association of india and the sports authority of india will perhaps have to step in and resolve quickly if india is to do well at the world level continues i agree with you this is not the first time for me i go back to exactly 6 years ago 2014 september at that time uh, before the incheon nation games in south korea saina nehwal had left the camp saina nehwal left hyderabad saina nehwal went then in bangalore with vimal kumar there was the first sign of some kind of a revolt or a difference whichever is the correct word saina of course later returned but again with lot of conditions and this is the second big time when apart from what dola gatta who also set up her academy in hyderabad but star players however big they are i have seen uh, you have seen that in uh, during the davis cup you know when that with those so much of uh, problems for the players to come they used to be playing on the tour then come back before a tie five days practice together one week practice together you have seen captains one playing captains a coach whatever they were the all in all it was uh, genial naresh kumar jaydeep mugarji anand ambatra there was discipline there was bonding of course there was no covid then but the fact remained players had busy schedules but now it seems everybody is uh, a superstar sindhu wants to train somewhere she has her own set of reasons then why a national camp why spend my money your money tax payers money on setting up such a big academy if things are not okay somebody has to control it Gopi is a great man, All England champion. So someone has to intervene. Indiscipline. This is not just indiscipline. We don't know what are the preparations. Other countries are far, far ahead in every sport. India is far behind. You look at Thomas Cup. You look at Uber Cup. You are going to look at the Badminton World Federation calendar. You are looking at less than or just over ten months for the Tokyo Olympics. Is this the way you are going to prepare? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. that brings me to this question uh, it's a very important question that we need to ask kanan uh, should the indian team be sent at all to denmark to play the thomas cup and the euro cup of course uh, if the team doesn't go it will be a pity on the younger players like akarshika shap and malvika bansod uh, for them it will be a great experience to to even watch uh, saina nehwal and pv sindhu train and then get on court but uh, should tax payers money be bored Uh, be used at this point of time where the team has not practiced enough they have not come together and and been at a training camp together 
would there be team spirit would there be bonding would it be the right thing to do to send a team towards the end of this month and and believe that it can pull off miracles there of course india is one of the strongest badminton nations no doubt about that but are we then axing the branch on which we are sitting at this point of time i think uh, it's a good point uh, if your team is unprepared or if your team is underprepared if the players have not bonded together how can you have doubles one partner sitting in one city and the other one in other city i think you, that whole team atmosphere is not there they have not gelled together you may have your two star in singles players ladies looking in different directions is this the kind of impression you are going to give when you go there or maybe you should have just taken strong steps okay one year thomas cup and uber cup we are going to leave out the superstars go ahead with the juniors there is no dearth of juniors give them that exposure let go pc how these juniors are there have been uh, many uh, instances where in other sport as well the stars have not played but then what do you do you don't keep begging you don't fall at their feet you don't waste the money you give someone else an opportunity let someone else get the chance to go and prove himself or herself that should have been done you have now let the players dictate to you that they will not come for the camp they will not follow covid and now let's be honest when you are going to go abroad again there will be strict covid regulations will you not follow the covid regulations in denmark or wherever it is being played you will so if you can follow the covid regulations bubble over there bio bubble there why not in india this is indiscipline this is not tolerable this should have been nipped in the bud longer i think it is also a little bit strange kanan because the gopichand academy does have residential facilities and i know for a fact that when the national camps are sanctioned um, Gopichand's academy does get paid for board and lodging. Now, if the players are not going to use that facility in critical times, when are they ever going to use it? Uh, these are difficult times for everybody. Uh, you would volunteer to go and stay in, in a COVID protocol zone, uh, would it? Would you not? I mean, you have seen hockey players do it. You have seen superstars like Virat Kohli um, and everybody else, right? Uh, Rohit Sharma. So many of them have accepted COVID protocol. they have learned to live in a bubble um, nobody is insisted on staying home on his own and then driving to play play for matches or for training camp i think um, some of these players need to understand that these are difficult times and difficult times call for tough solutions and when solutions become available uh, put together by the sports authority of india or by the badminton association of india the players need to accept that and the fact that they they demand certain privileges and get away with it we have honored them with the best of awards with the best of um, national awards in this country and for them to throw tantrums i i think is not the best uh, advertisement for the game they have been great role models many youngsters look up to these players but what comes from hyderabad now is not the best for sport certainly you know they have set a very wrong example and you mentioned uh, very very big names virat kohli and also rohit sharma well also ms dhoni everybody has followed it you know what is the problem there is no problem at all and just because you live in hyderabad your hometown or your adopted hometown you cannot be asking for uh, special permission again i go back to shooting because the shooting camp in delhi did not take place because the federation messed up the federation wanted to put up the shooters and the coaches in a private institution near the tuklabad shooting range they wanted them to come from there in a bus have a quarantine there the same sai the same top said no and i am telling you this i have written about it also and i have heard it from very very good sources i don't want to use the word reliable sources that this was the reason till date there is no camp there is no shooting camp even two days ago when sports minister kiran rijiju went to the tuklakabad ranges yes he inspected the facilities talked about providing ammunition He interacted with the shooters, all the international shooters, the development shooters who are part of the core, who are going to prepare for Tokyo. But they are not part of a national camp. It's like you walk in, walk out. You take care of your own protocol, COVID protocol. And if anything goes wrong, you are responsible for it. The biggest reason was Sai did not want any lapse in COVID protocol. Any player falling sick. There was one case. I cannot mention it here. of an athlete who was not well that athlete i don't want to say he or she had to go back home then came back later we've heard from the ioc president thomas bach saying 
maybe there's no vaccine. You have to accept certain harsh realities. You will have to follow it. There have been players in uh, the cricket tour in England, those who broke the code. There have been cases in the US Open, the you know, pair. Few more uh, leading names where they did not follow the protocol or there was a breach. They were removed. They said, no, you can't. But here, how can you go like this? Okay, I'm sure they will test these players, all these players who are part of Thomas and Umar Cup. Uh, Kanan, we can only hope that uh, between the Sports Authority of India and the Badminton Association of India, they pull things together and that if the Indian team does go and play in Denmark, uh, we can only hope that the team does well and that the senior players will deliver the goods and the junior players will learn the right lessons and then uh, serve India well in the years to come. Uh, hopefully, there will be some very good leadership that we will get to see over the next few days. Uh, between the Sports Authority of India and the Badminton Association of India. Uh, for me, the sports person has always been the center of my universe. But you don't become a superstar without following certain rules. And I think some of the players need to be reminded that. Uh, sadly, it does look like the chief coach has not been able to impress upon the players. Uh, they need to follow the COVID protocols laid down under the standard operating procedure of the Sports Authority of India. Yes, on that happy note, let's uh, wish the team good luck. We hope that they follow all protocols and we hope in future at least such incidents will not crop up. A national camp is a national camp. It's very sacrosanct. It's like a temple for the athlete and all of us. I wish they respect it and I wish all stakeholders involved in it realize how important it is during such times of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kanan. Uh, this is a very important sport for India. Uh, badminton has done well in the last so many years. Uh, Gopichand has raised the stature. Hopefully, he will retain control uh, over the players and then uh, ensure that India continues to walk in that direction where it has become a world path in the sport. Thank you so much, Kanan, for your time today. And I hope to catch up with you sooner than later.